Uh, Sherry Irwin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and ladies and gentlemen for having us. My name is Sherry Irwin and I'm opposed to the Constitutional Convention. Um, first, I want to ask you folks, when you leave here tonight, I want you to really read Article 5. Nowhere does it give you the authority to propose amendments as to what you want to discuss at the convention. All it says you can do is on the application of legislatures of two-thirds of the several states shall call a convention for proposing amendments. Really think about that. You can't do it ahead of time. Did you know our founding fathers were sent to revise the Articles of Confederation? Did you know they were told what ahead of time and they it took a hundred percent all states to change the Articles of Confederation? What could go wrong, right? Do you know what they did? They locked the door. They threw out the articles and they started over. Now we got lucky, we were blessed with godly men and got a beautiful document. The Constitution I think is the most beautiful document ever written by man. We're not going to have that today. Did you know there are socialist constitutions ready to go? They've discussed this as how they will do it. I will, did you know that delegates to the convention would possess unlimited though not unprecedented power to propose revisions to the existing Constitution based on the inherent right of the people in convention to alter or revise their government as explained in the Declaration of Independence. I recommend everybody reread the Declaration of Independence. That's our Articles of Incorporation. The Constitution is the bylaws. The Articles in the Constitution were to put restraints on the federal government. You already have the power now and you're not using it. The amendments were some of our God-given rights, some of the really big ones. You know, there's a lot more. They didn't put them all in there. And they enumerated that to make it clear to the, all governments, federal, state, city, our rights to bear arms shall not be infringed. Red flag laws are unconstitutional. If you think of passing a gun law, you just had an unconstitutional thought. Shame on you. You think we can't have runaway conventions? Well, we had it at our Republican convention last spring. In 2000, was it 2017, when we had our convention, we voted on the convention of states. It was overwhelmingly voted down. It was, you know, we all wrote our votes down. This year, we thought we were gonna get to do it again. We all lined up at the microphones to speak our minds, ready to speak out against it. Well, guess what? Mr. Clemens said, no, we're good. We'll do a voice vote. And you couldn't tell. He was louder. And he goes, it passes. There's an example of a runaway convention right there. And that is what could happen at a constitutional convention. Please sit down and really read Article 5. I know your heart's in the right place. You, it, it doesn't matter what you pass ahead of time. All you can do is apply for the convention. And as far as Congress not having any say, no, no, no. You go on into Article 5, it says, mode of ratification may be proposed by Congress. You are actually giving them more power if you do this. Yeah. Guys, you have the power now. Stop taking federal dollars for things that are unconstitutional. I know it'd be hard and people are gonna yell at you. And I know they stand up here and say, oh, most of the people that we poll want this convention. I don't know if that's true or not. People I talk to have no idea this is even going on. And it doesn't matter if 100% of the people want it. If 100% of your constituents want you to do something that could cause us to lose our Constitution, you got to be a good mommy or daddy and say, sorry, honey, mommy or daddy's got to say no on this one. Sometimes you got to say no to your constituents. And this is one of them. I'm telling you, you've got the power now. And there are constitutions ready to go. I have an article right here. And I didn't have time to make copies for everyone. I'll, I'll give it to you and you guys just you know, put this in a search engine. There's good articles at the bottom of this as well. Um, they have, uh, George Soros is actually f funding over 100 groups pushing this. And I know there's a rumor going around that he's against the Convention of States. It's not true. They were trying to do this in the 70s. They were trying. Respect, people. We don't laugh when you speak, okay? Sir, sir, we've got Sergeant Arms to deal with this, sir. It's not your responsibility. Um, Oh, I appreciate him defending me that I was ridiculed the last time I spoke by a convention of state person the whole time I was speaking. Oh, no, no. No, it was a convention of state person making faces behind me. <laughs> um, 
God, now I've lost my train. Oh, did you guys know in the 70s they were pushing for a convention and they actually were being honest about it? It was about getting rid of our Constitution. Thank God it got stopped. They went underground. So, I mean, we've got to figure out a better way to get, th get constitutionalists on our side. So they came up with the balanced budget amendment. Oh, that'll get them on board. One of them's term limits or more, I'm like, or is more appropriately called the lame duck amendment. You know, the most dangerous time in Congress is the lame duck. They shouldn't be allowed to meet after they lose the election. When you get fired, you get escorted out of the building. You don't get to stick around for two or three months. You know, you're, that is a lame duck amendment. You elect a senator for, to six years and he's not going to get reelected six years. He's a lame duck. California and Colorado, the state legislatures, um, I'll, I'll wrap it up here, they have term limits. And look what's happened to those two states, boom, down the chute into socialism because they don't have to answer to the people. They're passing all kinds of unconstitutional gun laws and everything else because they they're, don't have to face the electorate again. So um, I will give this to you. And um, oh, I want to just point out one more thing. You know, when they say these are the only amendments, I actually have a screenshot from the Convention of States on Facebook, June 23rd. Um, they talk about that, yeah, we're going to actually discuss the Second Amendment. We'll call it a clarification clause. And that's very much on the agenda of any number of the study groups that are currently being conducted around the country composed by Convention of State project advocates and their state legislatures. So don't think that what you're proposing is the only thing on the agenda. This, you know, I can email this to you if you'd like to see it. Um, I mean, that's a Convention of State person saying that. So. Yes, thank, thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for your time, Dave. Thank you, ma'am.